but he can still deliver on the server. And despite the score in the previous game, I think he did uh, have a reasonable performance despite them not getting the results they needed in terms of rounds. And now we get to see them start on the T side of Overpass versus Pro choosing the siders. This is the map pick of Cloud9. Many players moving towards the playground, not for the swings though. Only Jame on the A bomb site at present. Well, peeking around party, but he's fallen back to the A bomb site. VP will have a look towards short B and make sure no one's actually lurking outside. But can they rotate fast enough? Because Cloud9 seem to be Wing all the way. Making sure they clear the bathrooms out first, though. That is allowing time for this rotation. Two CTs now arriving on A. A third man is getting into the picture. That's Yakinda arriving just before the push into this A bomb site. Smoke's at the ready, being deployed onto the site itself. And we are ready to go. Flashes over the top, and Woxic's able to get the first kill. Passive play from the CTs, but Sanji's isolated on the bomb site. He's still alive, though, and he's still doing damage. Two kills from Sanji. He's surely going to fall here. Finally, they run him down, but the rotate has arrived. And oh, Cloud9 have found the gap. They're going B. They really are. Bombs being thrown on the floor to be collected by Floppy. Now, they don't have any smokes to hold down the balcony position, but they will keep the high ground of S-Tag. Awkward fights are to come, though. That's a great insta-headshot from him. I didn't know there's a 2v1 to be had on the bomb side itself. Floppy trying to take matters into his own hands, but he couldn't quite land the headshot there. Buster makes the opening, 2v1 now. S-Tag last seen upstairs, but is he still upstairs? Bomb kind of planted for him. Smoke grenade is going to cause some problems. He's got a kit as well, Jame. But is he going to be able to get landed? the defuse? No, he's down, but so is S-Tag. Buster with the trade, finds the kit, and there's the pistol round for Virtus Pro. It's a great call from Cloud9 to get down to that B site, and I wouldn't be surprised if it's S-Tag making that call. He, he's had the freedom to make a few individual calls like that. This initial kill looked good as well onto the A site, but Sanji just stayed alive for so long. I think he really wins them the round there by getting those two kills. And then even though Cloud9 made a good maneuver to get to the B site, that smoke for the bomb was always going to make things really tricky for Asatag in the clutch. Great round from both teams, but VP win it out, and James instantly goes for the orb. He was a little bit quiet on that first map, James. I'd like to see more from James on this one. Uh, shades of Woxic on the second round of Inferno, but will he have the same fate? Because Cloud9 lost that round. Now, Bus, does he, check, does he check to his right or his left? There's a trade. That's enough for now, but Yekandar's still here. There's more aggression to come from Virtus Pro. Very brazen plays here. Woxic trying to do what he can with the scout, but that won't happen either. The bomb is still in the control of Cloud9. That's a plus. Two versus three with a minute 20 on the clock. Who does that favor? Jame upstairs with the AWP. Focus on B from the remainder. Kika with an awkward as angle as possible. One for one. Messi from range with the MAC-10. Now the question is, where is Jame and what does he have? A minute on the clock for Messi, and he will look to reset the situation. Messi came close on a couple of clutch scenarios over on the first map. We've talked about how he's been brought into this team to win clutches like this. As an inexperienced player, that is a hard thing to do. But Messi started this one as well as he could. And I think he's making the right read here. He's going up through Connector, up towards the A-bomb site. He's probably not going to use his nades because he doesn't want to give the game away. But that's not going to be a problem. Jame, not in position. Now the smoke goes down. Oh, it's a fake, though. Jame is coming up to the A-bomb site. Mezzi's going back down to B. Can Jame read this, though? I don't think he's aware of it. The molly from Mezzi to cut off the rotate. He's going to get himself a free bomb plant here. Onto the site he goes. 20 seconds. But once he's there, he might not be going anywhere. It's going to be really difficult to escape. Mezzi on the left side. Not as difficult as I thought. He slinks away completely, and Jame's got no idea. He's convinced he's still on the site, I think. Messi on the low ground now. Does he spot the jump? Just oh. about. Great play from Messi to clutch the round. Much needed from Cloud9. Once again, opportunity knocks. We're not on Inferno anymore. They've reset VP after, after they lost the pistol. Again, they're in a strong position. But what a wild round. Yeah, what a round from Messi. That is massive. And this is what Henry G had to say after the first map. A little bit cold onto the server, but it's their pick. And VP played an excellent game. Everyone calm down. Plenty of CS to go. I think Henry's right. I think Overpass should be a better affair for Cloud9. And for what it's worth, on Mezzi, I did an interview with him like six months ago. And he said the two players he looked at most were Zipex and Cold Zero. Two great clutch players. He's already showing up here. Not too shabby, but here we go again. Yekindar, how's he got two from that? They're just walking into the Deagle. No response from Cloud9. Caught sleeping again. No, it's not Inferno, but it's a five on three versus VP's force buy. 
That seems so simple. All right, that's finally Something. your kinder take it out of it. Yeah, get him out of the server instantly because he's been landing some stunning shots so far today. That deagle close range is just so good when you can spam to the body just with two body shots for the kill. That's why your kinder's playing there. And now Cloud9 have to just come back into the 3v4. Looks like Floppy will be holding on a flank and protecting the fallen weapons for now. See if he picks up an AK later. I think there's one on the floor. They've got to be careful with time. This is such an awkward position as far as time is concerned once you get onto a bomb site. If we're talking sub 25 seconds and VP have this many players alive with smokes as well, trying to plant that bomb could be what loses you the round. 35 seconds and they're not on the bomb site just yet. Look at the response. Floppy's still waiting for that rotation. His patience has been paid off. But where do they go? 25 seconds. They're nowhere near a bomb site. Look where the bomb is. It's at the beginning of the toilets. VP will gamble a second player towards that A bomb site. 19 seconds on the clock, and they have not breached yet. They don't know the climate on the bomb site. Sanji's here with the Deagle. That's a nasty flick from Sanji. Just killing time now as more rotation comes through. Woxic in a one versus two. That's a nice headshot with the Glock, but it's not enough. He's got to commit to the bomb plant. They can rush him, they can converge on him. Down to the Glock, he knows he's damaged him. Woxic, oh my god, he's the aim. 1v1 now. Buster coming from the toilet and he's clutched it again. Another scary round for Cloud9. And they just about survive with one player alive. Woxic's high sensitivity was just checking every angle there, trying to figure out where Jane was. He finally realized that Jane had backed off. The opening kills from Yakinda were, were really well taken, but Mezzi heard those steps, spray back, Floppy gets another kill. And even though Sanji comes close here, Woxic with a really nice clutch. And we are starting to see more from the individuals of Cloud9. The problem is we're only getting to see more of the individuals because they're getting put into these clutch scenarios, because these rounds are getting a little close for comfort. But at least Cloud9 convert back to back rounds. And this gives them a chance to actually build up some money, to actually get themselves into this game, which never really happened for them on Inferno. So I'm glad they win some early rounds. Now, Virtus.pro have got a B stack in this one, and Sanji's up close with the Zeus. Oh, here we go again. Sanji with the Zeus. I can't believe my eyes. However, Cloud9 have prevailed for now. Yekandar is still alive, and he's been causing them some problems. Looks to, again, very patient with the Desert Eagle. No need to give him a 1v1 there. Let him stand there with the Deagle. Maybe a chance for Cloud9 to stabilize now to uh, just have a bit of a breather. Because boy, has this been difficult. But in th there are positives to be had from that. They've had to try and survive early. And these tests may uh, make them stronger for the carnage to come. Curious to see what we'll see from uh, the next buy round from Virtus Pro. They basically split this area on the CT side earlier on, which was very exciting to watch. So who knows what is to come. Yekindar offered nothing. Again, no, no need to chase him down. Best you can do is win $300 by fragging him. Worst you can do is die, lose an AK, and cost yourself a $5,000 for the next round. So leave him to his devices. Definitely the right decision. Cloud9 making sure their money is strong. We saw an Inferno all those economy issues they had, so I think that's something they are stressing at the start of Overpass. And we've got Orbs out for Woxic and Jame. Jame is going to be playing in those bathrooms. He's got a good spawn as well, so we might see Jame go for the mid-pick early. Let's see if Cloud9 are willing to fight him, though, as Jame looks for the angle, trying to line it up. Flash comes in, and Jame decides to play safe. Yeah, he's deep towards A alone for the time being, entrusted see the rifle support later on. In the meantime, Alex makes a play. Oh, he's got a nice headshot onto Sanji. Taste of his own medicine with the MAC-10. Traded by Keycut, however. May have got some information. We'll see how he choose to, chooses to shape the round now. And going in first with the MAC-10, he's dead, which allows him to focus on the IGL with the remaining riflers. This is a strong buy from Virtus Pro in terms of weaponry. Mainly smokes that remain for them. Still Jane playing alone, more or less. Around a toilet position, maybe Yekandar jump peeking long. Cloud9 up to burst on long. Here we go. Jame is activated early. That angle was just so hard to clear from the T side, especially if James holding it from further away. He's going to see you, and you're barely going to see him. 
So Jane playing a nice position to get himself an early kill. And now a rotate is coming up to this A site. Virtus Pro stacking heavily on A. They've got Buster pushed into B short, so they've got three CTs on this A bomb site. Cloud9 do have nades, but they're going to need clean kills to get onto the site itself. Yeah, Buster can see Monster from where where he is, I believe, which is why they're just entrusting everyone to walk into James AWP. And this is the rifle support I was talking about. It activates late, which allows James the luxury of focusing on toilets. Here comes a two-man swing from the remainder of Cloud9. But there are so many CTs here. 13 seconds, the bomb is on the floor, and it's Woxic's turn to save the AWP. Not much more he can do, but look to hide in plain sight. A quick jump, and the Hunters are coming. He is surrounded. He does not want to die after time. So he's got to force the fight somewhere. Oh, that's a close one. But down he goes. Virtus Pro now with their first round since the pistol. And Cloud9's money is pretty borderline here. I think they probably would be buying. There's the kill from Alex onto Sanji. And this is the tight angle we were talking about with the AWP of Jame. He's much better served in that position. I thought Mezzi might wait for his teammates to push long there, because pushing it alone through the bathrooms when you know Jame was there with the AWP, it's a really risky game. And just giving away that kill puts them in such a hard spot. Yeah, and I think it was maybe a gamble expecting the AWP to rotate, but with the rifle support, there was no reason for him to. But they were not able to deduce that in that round. Now we see some shortcomings for Cloud9. The AWP and two AK-47s. There's a lot of utility, however. Buster again with a brazen position, this time of support from Sanji for now. Now, if he, if he elevates and sits on the rail, we can see the feet as people come in short B. In the meantime, there's a focus on the A-bomb site for Cloud9. But look at the response. Yekendar moving up the long position while Jame tries to defend with the AWP. He's got angles. He also has some trouble as well. The brulan esque smoke that we spoke about yesterday is put down. Helps him create a bit of a wall. And Sanji's here. Look, they're lining up for him. Caught Alex completely off guard. He has support as well, and again, the CTs are delaying now. The flank is eliminated by Floppy. Trying to plant James, still lurking. Easy angles for him. There's the power of that smoke, one of them. Quite a few things you can do. A lot of time on the clock here. Such an awkward spot for Cloud9, and then there were two. S-Tag's gone. That leaves Floppy with low HP and Woxic as well. Now Woxic taking the tag down to 37. He's going to get back to the bathrooms. Normally a strong spot to play the post plant from, but when you're so low like this in a 2v4, it's not looking good for Cloud9. Woxic's looking for an early fight. They still haven't tapped that bomb, but that's finally going to happen. And now Woxic has to be scared of the defuse. He gets the first kill. Floppy spamming the bomb, but they realize they're not on it yet. Woxic still not able to connect. They're not finding the angle, and this should be it. Sanji and Yakinda both cleaning up the kills. Good effort from Cloud9 getting onto the site in the first place, but VP just surviving at long made it really tricky for Cloud9 there. And they weren't ready for that fast rotation. They couldn't get down into bank, into dumpster. That might have allowed them to plant on the other side of the site. But as soon as Alex goes down, they have no real way of getting that bomb down easily. And VP always have a favorable retake. You can see the problems that smoke causes uh, from the CTs when they drop it between long and the default plant spot. Can't plant there for free with that smoke up, but there's nowhere else that they could plant. But maybe if they waited with the time they had, maybe it would have got even more awkward for them. And it's still awkward now with pistols and a MAC-10. A cameo MAC-10 for Alex. Messi. Oh, Fasta is caught completely off guard, trying to support his teammates, but still Cloud9, not with as much success as he might expect, but it will continue. Sanji falling back. He has to try and stay alive for that rotation to come through. Yekendal with a slow flank in the meantime, two by the barrels, a two-man spray down for Sanji, and four round for Virtus Pro. Sanji getting those two kills is pretty impressive. I thought he was about to get caught out. And then if they lost the site, there could have been some calls for concern. This is Messi just spamming desperately with the Tech 9. Couldn't get the clean kill, which might have allowed a quick push onto the site. And then real issues to arise for Virtus Pro. But it's VP into the lead. 4-3 in their favor. Sanji lining up the smoke. I don't know if I've seen that before. Where that is that one fast one. Oh, wow. Oh, wow, OK. That's with Molly's really ahead of it, so you can't even see where the Molly is. That's painful. Yeah, it's gone all the way into that choke point. Look as at well. Yekindar. Wow. Look where he's standing. That's that deep smoke, though. That's that's why he can get there. That's it's almost really a minute cool. 40 on the clock. It's almost a minute 40 on the clock, and he's almost in T spawn. How do you respond to this, Cloud9? You have absolutely no upper information. You have to expect three players on B. Oh, boy waiting for the doors to be open. They don't have anybody in connector. 
So the CTs could, in theory, pinch them here. They would have no idea. Sanji's seen the bomb. But there's a trade. The Def Cam will give him a lot of players. But again, they're in position already. Can they deliver? Buster's good for one. The trades are here. Kika now looking for the transfer. Two versus two. Bombs on the floor. James about to get smoked off. There's Yekendar coming in for the flank. Bombs being collected. They got half the information now. Jame on the way down. Let's see if he goes for any wall bangs. Awkward situation. Out comes Jame. Who goes first for versus pro? Jame looking for an early angle. Oh, Alex almost got spotted there. Smoke being flopped down by James to allow him to move on out. But it's Yakinda who might be able to get some kills from the back lines. He's just used a flashbang though. So the information's gathered here. Cloud9 know where they're coming from, but James got the angle from above. And Mezzi is left in the clutch. 1v2, here's the first man, gets the first headshot. It's up to James who's up on top of the site and Mezzi's hearing him. Mezzi's trying to find it, but James jumps up and I think he's just got time. It's a close one, but James has the kit and Virtus Pro have yet another round down to the wire versus pro they're working well together when they're in the low numbers that flashbang was really solid jane very patient as well trying to avoid getting sprayed just walking into the angle i do wonder if there's some nervousness on the younger players of cloud nine maybe the the pressure of their first match the expectations astronomical expectations but it's still early still early in this game of overpass but versus pro have gained momentum four rounds in a row cloud nine are planting the bomb however We've got the Molotov up close once again. Versus Pro mixing things up. This time, Walks are getting very aggressive. The AK-47 with the opening kill. Yekendar has been a key player. And we did wonder for Versus Pro. Again, he had good ratings, but he's been against CIS team since he came from Plostar. But it continues here versus Cloud9. Nice shot from James, though. Straight back with a reply. Quick flick onto Woksik. Sanji not ready for floppy there at long loses that fight now James is alone on the a site with the orp he might just have to get aggressive here he might just have to make a play because he's left alone on this site they're not rotating to help him so James realizes he could maybe do with getting an early kill and then perhaps trying to play for retake but James is now committed to the truck position cloud nine not pulling the trigger yet though they've still got a minute left on the clock they've got a man advantage this is a round that Cloud9 should win most of the time. If you're going to be picking overpass, you have to be able to win these sorts of rounds where you have the lead and you have the entire map to play with. I do wonder if we have some fear of Jame. Now, the door's been blown off, which allows him to come out quickly because there was utility for Virtus Pro. The smoke has been deployed somewhere. I don't think it's gone in the right place, though. No, it really hasn't. And then here come the entries. Floppy trying to wide switch, but he was alone. The three come from Monster into a crossfire of CTs. 26 seconds, and Messi's still alive for now. James is creeping, though. Maybe position unknown on the P250, and it's 2 HP for Messi. Trying to create some space for himself, but surely James will land the shot just about. Virtus Pro find their fifth round in a row. Messi's getting close in these clutch scenarios. And you're seeing he is that last man in trying to clean up all the mess. And the problem there, I think, for Cloud9 is that the earlier fights go pretty poorly for them. Lightning fast for Jame in that one. But then Kicker catches Floppy alone on short. And this is where the crossfire is established. Messi does a pretty good job at at least getting himself onto the site. But he was low on health at that point. It was always going to be a tough clutch to win against Jame, who was so close by. And S-Attack finally buying a gun last second. AK still out in full force for Cloud9. You can see at the top of your screen, Cloud9 are getting the bomb down pretty consistently. They're just not able to win the rounds right now. Virtus Pro mixing things up from round to round. Very proactive, very aggressive. Not sure if, yeah, Alex has been spotted now. Ouch. A bell gets rung through the panel. Oh, Kika and Buster are pretty heavily tagged now. They want to be a little careful. What does Sanji have in mind here? Because it doesn't look like anyone's close to make a play. Ah, oh, the boost. Oh, beautiful. So many targets seen. A lot of information. Now, Cloud9, though, they've conceded that info as well. Does that mean that we'll see some aggression upstairs they don't have position they've got no information there cloud nine the boosts continue from Virtus pro they just keep on coming they smell weakness and they will exploit it 
I love the way they do that boost as well. Buster's low on health on the bottom of that boost, so he doesn't go exposed from the wall. He makes sure he can't get spammed. He makes sure he's behind safe cover so he can't get spammed through, and his teammate just slides out to the right for the kill. Now, 33 seconds left. Oh. Cloud9 still yet to make up their minds, and Kickout's position could be key, but he goes down. Now they can run it onto this A site. Oh, I don't think he needed to pick that deep to just play the off angle from that position. Wasn't going to rotate anytime soon. That changes a lot for Cloud9. James so patient with the shots. 17 seconds. Bomb's been dropped, collected by S-Tag. But how can he plant it? He really needs help. He will take out Yekandar in the meantime, but James is still alive. 1v1, 10 seconds to plant the bomb. And another flick. Virtus Pro. James is firing on all cylinders, and those cylinders are going straight in the chest of Cloud9. It's not easy to be an AWPer in those clutch scenarios as well, but James is one of the best at it. He plays this passive playstyle really well. There was a round earlier where Cloud9 had three or four plays together and slinked away from A and went towards B. And I feel like it was fear of Jame, which is making them make that rotation. He's got so many corners, nooks and crannies to dance around, to re-aggress, to take another angle, to get 1v1s. It's really hard to trade frag him at the moment. And that's certainly helping versus Pro. I would love if we could come up with a name of that as well. When a player's like so good in a spot that you almost don't want to push him. Because I think of the NBA, for example, like Steph Curry is so good at shooting threes that he gets this gravity where the defenders get drawn to him. I would love something in Counter-Strike where it's almost like a repelling force, right? You're repelling people away from you because you're so good in those spots. Not a great buy for Cloud9 here. We might see a faster play into this B site though. This is what teams love to do on these rounds. If you've got some good flashes, these plays can work. Yeah, it's a nasty round in terms of the weapons, but Virtus Pro have got the numbers here. Looking for the opening kill. It will be the MAC-10. The numbers are swarming all over the place, but Virtus Pro are ready for them. They're cool, they're calm, and they are focused on these players. Mezzi won't last very long. Eight rounds of VP, seven in a row on a CT side. You really want to rack up the rounds on your CT side, and so far, they're doing a good job of it. It has been a drought for Cloud9 of late. They've come close. They've come down to the clutch situations, but they're all going the way of Virtus Pro. You can see the diffuses at the top of your screen. Every time it comes down to like a 2v2, a 1v1, VP are getting it every single time. Definitely. VP just have the edge right now in a lot of aspects. And look at the setup from VP in this round. Four players on the A side of the map early. This suggests to me we might see some aggression from VP in this round. They're already setting up towards mid, trying to see if they can get some early kills. Yakindar just took that nade to the face, by the way. Down to half health from that one early. But if Cloud9 peak mid, they might have some problems. James just now dropping off the angle at just the wrong time. Woxic almost catches him in the back. Yeah, there was a jump peak from the slide in the playground. You can boost on that as well, but there's a lot of action. And again, it's going the way of VP on the CT side. They are dictating the pace on overpass and Cloud9 can't respond to it at the moment. Floppy and S-Tag gonna two versus five. Floppy is behind enemy lines. But look at the angles being held by VP. They're aware of their weaknesses and down he goes just when you thought it was safe to make an opening. Denied. VP telling Cloud9 to get out of town right now. Nessa tag just backing away. There are a couple of low health players. I guess technically Nessa tag still has the bomb. It's not very likely, though, if we're being realistic. 1v5s are incredibly rare, and this one isn't even an easy one. 35 seconds left. Esetag about to get a fight. Not one he's ready for, though. Yakindar timing that push to perfection. Virtus Pro with a 9-3 lead, and VP are playing great CS right now. Again, Sanji's having a fantastic performance. 14 kills for him. Yakindar's doing great work. Jame has been winning so many clutches. Everything's just going right for VP right now. As soon as we've hit the gun rounds in these games, they've just taken over. Yeah, they've not really uh, given up much in the name of weakness, working together well as a unit. Smoke on Monster again. Cloud9 looking to take some real estate towards the short B position. And VP have changed up their formation so much on this CT side. You can't even say, okay, they, they did this, let's do that because the next round is doing something completely different. Sanji knows his angles. Buster spots one close, and he can raise the alarm. Three players on the B bomb site for Virtus Pro. But again, Buster's just loving the peaks here. Doesn't even matter if it's T side or CT. He just wants to peak. He wants the engagements. Sanji with the support grenades. 
target practice for Buster. Just having fun here. It doesn't look like, I mean, sure, this is like anti-eco territory, but I don't, can't imagine Virtus Pro feel threatened at the moment. Not with how this game's been going so far. Essatag could get into a threatening position, though, sneaking in towards the bathrooms. Jame is jumping around on the site right now. So that might put him in a position where he could get dealt with, and then Yakindar wouldn't be too close by. They're going to go long, though, and Yakindar hears these steps. This is such a good angle. Out in the open, double spray down there, not ready for it, and the bomb has been dropped over at long. This is impossible. Jame gets another kill. Nothing doing for Cloud9 in this round as James showing supreme confidence on that second peak. And you can see right now, VP are playing their own game. They're continuing to play that CIS style. The individuals are killing it. This is why VP were qualified for this tournament. They've just been in incredible form recently, and it's continued. Yeah, it really has. Very disappointing run when they first joined Versus Pro. Very storied brand in Counter-Strike. Didn't live up to expectations, but maybe now they can here in Flashpoint 2. Stunting the growth of Cloud9 early. Such harassment around Overpass. It is a playground for Versus Pro. Same cannot be said for Cloud9. Those balloons are not for them. The door being blown off in Connector can cause quite the problem. And so can a gun in the face. Yekandar. Looks like he fits in quite well with Versus Pro. You know, Yekandar in his interview actually said he overlapped quite a bit with Buster when Buster came back to this lineup, but Buster was actually willing to give up his roles to make the most of Yakindar, to make sure Yakindar got his spots. I think it's really cool that Buster did that, considering he's been part of this core squad since 2017. It's nice as well because it makes things fresh, like multiple roles for the team in that respect, because we see that with other teams. We'll add a new player, you just take up the roles of the last player, and nothing oh really changes. My God. The opening frag for Cloud9 is more or less in T-spawn in the second last round. With all that Virtus Pro have been doing, how do you even get a chance to decide what you want to do? Cloud9 have been forced to react to Virtus Pro rather than play their own game, I feel like. And that is a credit to Virtus Pro. And look how many players they have on this B bomb site. <laughs> no one wants to go and face James. 25 seconds on the clock. And maybe this time they will. As we've got Alex creeping onto the site. James doesn't reveal his position just yet. A quick scope, a nice flick from him, but it's a bigger headshot from Floppy. Cloud9 now going for the jugular onto this A site. They're planting on truck as well. Not the open plant you might normally see. Sanji arriving, but Essatag is in the front lines. Floppy lands the first kill. Essatag able to trade, and it's a 1v1. Woxic playing back in the bathrooms. No nades yet, but remember, that bomb is planted on the truck. Kickert's going to get on that bomb, and Woxic may have to go into the open. He has to hit this shot, and he will. Woxic winning the clutch for Cloud9, and after a long, dry streak, Cloud9 finally get their fourth round on the board. For those of you at home, that's where you plant the bomb when no one is covering the flank. That'll probably save you 40% of the rounds you lose in that situation. And uh, again, it's a desperate fourth round for Cloud9, but this, this, is, this is still a lot better than the, the situation they were in on Overpass. And if they can get a fifth, then that would be fantastic. There's a lot to be done on the CT side, but I think it would be difficult to match the peak we've seen from Virtus Pro. It's been great to watch, it really has. Very satisfying the way they have just taken control of this map, but there's one more to go. Woxic looking for the entries with the AWP. Scoped in. However, Yekandar may have a better angle here. We shall see. Walks into it as Woxic readjusts, looking for a second. There's a third and a fourth as well on this B-bomb site. Virtus Pro looking for that early aggression from Cloud9, and in Jame, they really do trust. Oh, this time James gets caught out, and that could be the round done. VP have to go for it. It's the last round of the half, but look how far away they are. They're just now rotating up to this A site. This is like maybe a 1% chance at most that VP win this round. There are so many nades for Cloud9, so many smokes and flashes left. VP have to land some banging shots here. They really do. Cloud9 cannot afford to lose this round. No flank on the way. Maybe we'll keep an eye on it though. Plenty of personnel on the A-bomb site. Three incendiaries for Versus Pro. One for the truck. Time starting to run low. Probably has to be a ninja defuse here. I see the smoke sailing in the air, I do believe. 
trying to see something of anything. But all they can do is feel all the bullets coming their way. Cloud9 will get a very important fifth round on the board. They've got a fighting chance moving into the second half. And that comes after the break. The second half, maybe the favoured half for them, the CT half. What do they have to show us? Haven't been able to show us much of anything because Virtus Pro have had a pillow on the faces of Cloud9, but maybe now they can finally remove it and show us what they can do. Yeah, hopefully they can start to breathe a little, get some freedom beneath their wings, because right now it is not going well for the boys in blue. Virtus Pro already starting to walk out on towards the B site. They've got some nades at the ready. Flash is about to come through. Esetag and Mezzi both playing in the pit position, but they both have no Kevlar. Alex has to land the first shot, and that smoke from Esetag is doing a really good job at keeping him alive. He walks around for another kill. Esetag doing damage, and it's all on Jame. Another clutch has to go his way, this time with the Glock in his hands, but he's not got the bomb. He might just have to play for the kills. Jame with the first into the 1v1, and Jame cannot lose right now, winning every single clutch for this team. VP are just playing so well individually. They're so calm. Oh boy. Avert your eyes, Henry. This is a tough one. They're so they're just playing so strong versus pro. There's no panic. Completely calm. Jame, calm as a cucumber. No, cucumbers are cool, not calm. Probably calm as well. <laughs> I'll take it. And a timeout from Versus Pro, allowing Cloud9 to stew on that one. That's got to be dejecting. That has got to be dejecting. We see the Force Fires come through from Cloud9 already. Furtus Pro now have won both pistol rounds. Let's not forget, if Cloud9 fail in this, in this uh, Force Buy, then this could be a brief half of Counter-Strike. We may go into tomorrow with, uh, with limited information on what we've seen from Cloud9 because Virtus Pro have just been so dominant. Some people pay to be dominated like this. <laughs> that they do, James. I was just bringing up the uh, the clutch stats for Jame in this map so far. That's his fourth 1vx he's won. So that's four of VP's rounds he's won in clutch scenarios by himself. I mean, that basically is making a huge difference right here in, in the scoreline. I think Cloud9 have come close in a lot of these rounds. They've shown the potential ability. They just need one or two more kills in these spots and they would win these rounds. But it's going against them and now a fast B play at the ready. In they go. Numbers game abusing the advantages of the T side. Alex just waiting, looking to his left, taken out from his right. Losing position, losing players, losing chances here. But maybe Mezzi can do something. He's found two with a Deagle already. And now he's gone. Woksik with a scout versus three. This would be a miracle. Off he goes, looking for the first flick. Can't land a headshot or much of anything. And it's 12-5 Virtus Pro. The meat and potatoes of this will start with Virtus Pro likely on 13 rounds. There's not much to finish after that. Plate will soon be clean. Not much in the way of investment here for Cloud9. Sanji's gonna stick with the USP. I think that's possibly the most Sanji thing he could do. Doesn't even get the MAC-10, James. He's so good with the MAC-10 as well. Yeah. He really is the uh, the bank of versus pro. Well, somewhat underwhelming thus far, but there is a buy round to come. But these are the, these are the crucial times. You lose that second pistol round. You start against 13 rounds. Did Estag jump up here? Oh man! If you don't win your first buy round, go on. Estag. It's so close to GG. Knife, knife. There is a, a map called Jumps Training in the workshop where you can practice that amongst other jumps, some which are older. Imagine how, oh wow, S attack with a second kill. Oh, I look was at the position actually. He split, uh, the bomb is still kind of reacting to where he is on the way to a bomb site. Oh, oh God, no. if he doesn't focus on Jame though, he's gonna get shot in the back. Oh, there was a chance there, a glimmer of hope. I think many people were just praying Cloud9 might win that just so we can see some more Counter-Strike because that's the way 
the way things are going, it doesn't feel like that might happen. 40 seconds, Woxic trying to play for time. He's got some sound cues to allow his teammates to stay on the site. VP are really playing this one patiently. More moonwalking, and there goes the bomb. Doesn't go for the rifle. Tries to stay safe instead, prioritizes winning the round. Would be risky to go out there. And here comes Woxic, found a Galil actually. And then Kikurtz alone. This one has absolutely fallen to pieces. This should be free for Virtus Pro. Maybe overplayed their hand here. 15 seconds though. Let's not have any mistakes. Oh, Kika! Run away, Woxic. Run for your life. Where's he off to? He's still out in the open. This could still be one. Seven seconds. He's just around the corner. Kika's going to the side, but he doesn't have time. Where is he going? Trying to bait the peak. Had no idea where he was. Cloud9 is still alive. That was uh, ridiculous. That that round goes the way of... <laughs> oh, <laughs> what God. Is this? Henry spending the money. Look, man. <laughs> I'll do what it takes. Where's the salary at? Let's go. I got a great to start in esports. Just ask those girls on the right. They, I don't think they can see it that well. They've not got the best angle. You gave the best angle to Henry, of course. <laughs> yeah. Die, die. No, 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 never mind. <laughs> Let's just leave that one there. <laughs> Cloud9 have half the score of Virtus Pro. They've got much work to do. They've been gifted a way back into this. They've kept Virtus Pro off 13, and they're being pretty active VP. They're out in the go karts, going cross country on the grass of long. They've taken initial map control. I don't know what they were up to in that last round, but uh, they may have given Cloud9 an opportunity to show a bit of ass themselves. Shake the money maker. Nice. These positions are somewhat interesting. Um, uh, Mezzi on his old team was playing in bathrooms, was playing on the A site of Overpass. This time it's S attack playing here to begin with though. I think Maui was mentioning he was expecting Esetag to be playing towards B and then Mezzi to be playing A, but it is Woxic who we might have to look at first. He's got the AWP on a tight angle. Oh, Esetag was giving the sound cues away as well, and I thought Yekendar might get baited by that, but Woxic had to deliver the utility, which Yekendar can hear. He's being teased. There's a frag just around the corner. But what will Versus Pro do with this information? They may identify that there is some kind of hold around the toilets, but what can they do to play against that? They are running the clock down, starting to deploy the grenades now. No presence towards the B-bomb site. Surely it has to be A here. s in here. He's got a shadow advantage as well, but not the crouch peak of Sanji. Very nice response to that. Messi trying to hold things down. Needs to multi frag the pre-fire from him. 20 seconds. Bombs on the floor. Here comes a flank from Alex as well. Woxic also delivering. Starting to look brighter for Cloud9. Jane will try to hold on to the AWP. He is surrounded, however. He may even die after time. Alex said running away. Doesn't seem to know where he is. There is a pulse in this Cloud9 squad. Pretty hefty stack on that A site there for Cloud9 as well. They had three players there. I do wonder whether Cloud9 have put in more prep to overpass, j just in terms of looking at VP even, because they had a really good read on that round. They had really good awareness that they could stack that A site. And I also think that if I was Cloud9, I'd have probably expected VP to pick Dust2, because that is the map that VP almost always pick. It, it's either Dust2 or Inferno, but it's Dust2 which is their most common pick. So they may have similar ideas for Dust 2. They may have done similar prep work if we get there. That's still a big question, though. Cloud9 with a nice oh. boost. That's a tag over the top. And Cloud9 starting to bust out some tricks now. They've got some moves. Classic strats. Hop on your teammate's head. You'll get there before the T's do. And it is an easy spray down. No response from VP. They didn't have position to punish from above connector. They have a focus on the B bomb site. James still with the AWP. I love these hero orb rounds. There is an AK as well, but generally speaking, the focus is on the AWP. Has to be the can opener here. But on a map such as Overpass, especially towards B, off angles can be held. Look at the creep. Here we go. James is able to get the first kill. Here comes Buster as well. The numbers is working out for Virtus Pro. Now they take the lead three versus two, make it one. Woxic has to clutch all of a sudden. Virtus Pro always causing problems. That HG grenade will reveal his position. They know exactly where he is now, and things only become worse. No need to focus on Connector. Slowly edging forward. He knows Jame is creeping. Jame holding the angle, looking for the peak while his teammate swarmed. Baited him into the shot, and there's no way he misses this one. 13 rounds for Virtus Pro. They've broken the money of Cloud9. They've put him in a really awkward spot now.
really impressive how VP set up Jame in that round, even though he's not playing that aggressively. Look at all these kills from Jame. His teammates are running in first, and then Cloud9 are thinking they need to peek to get kills. They're thinking that they need to fight, and Jame is just able to get all the information and get these trade kills with the AWP, which is not easy to do. But Jame made it look easy with all those shots. Just having the information, having the lineup early, Jame now 21 kills. He has been dominating on overpass. And unless something changes here in this round, Woxic has got the first kill. That's a much needed kill for Cloud9. They need to win this round. They forced up into this one. If they lose here, Cloud9 are in real trouble. So getting that early kill is a big benefit. Molly into Boppy's position. The smoke is delayed, but he finally puts it down, having taken half damage. This is the flick, Woxic. Similar positions to James. Similar positions. Just inventing a new language for a second there. Why not? Klingon, maybe. Yeah. Falls back to the A bomb site. Some rotation, some activity from Cloud9, but they are playing the sites. Not too deep, not overextending. Not allowing Virtus Pro to isolate them. A very tricky Virtus Pro squad to deal with. Cloud9 now with the third man. As I say, playing the sites, we can see Alex has gone up for the two man setup on long. That will. Make his rotation longer towards this B-bomb site. And here comes Kika, but where's the rest? The smokes are up, the site is split. Woxic will frag Yekendar, leaving to Sanji doing what he can. He's got a multi-frag though. There's still more to deal with and they go so quickly. Virtus Pro forcing their way back into this round, post-plant positions and all. Mezzi has salvaged that AWP from his teammate's body. Could see a boost come into play if they wanted to go for it, but they're just going to walk out. Sanji still sitting in the water close by. He's only on two health, but the headshot could be offered. Mezzi gets the kill from above, and it's Jamin in yet another clutch. This time smoked off. This is going to be the trickiest of them all for Jame. He has to line it up through the smoke, but it's a full 10-second defuse. The leg shot lands. Jame, he's got to do it. He's got to get the kill, but it's not happening for him. <laughs> Alex spams through, and Cloud9 are still alive. It's scary to watch. God, it must be there must be a, a feeling in the pit of the stomach for Cloud9 when Jame is the last man standing. He has been the problem. Well, actually, one of many, <laughs> let's be honest. They've all been a big issue for Cloud9, but they keep the fights alive. Three of the last four rounds now for Cloud9. They've all been difficult. Two by timeout, one by defuse. They really are starting with the toughest, tef toughest test possible. They're on nightmare mode in this first game. This opening game of this team, of this new roster. VP are one of those teams who are, are going to test you like that as well. Just with their aggressive play style, they're going to test everything. They're going to test if your team play is on point, if you've got good counter aids, if you've got good understandings of the chemistry between the players. I think we have seen that really been put into full force throughout this game. But Cloud9 is still going strong. Eight rounds for them. They won that last one. And this is an investment from VP on a couple of oh players. No. Walks it caught up close. That's an orb that could be recovered. The spray from behind, not successful, but Sanji pushes the smoke and VP get a couple of guns and an advantage. The dream is collapsing again. Every round it feels like Cloud9 getting smashed by a Comet. Messi and Alex versus four. And then it was Mezzi, again the last man standing for Cloud9, often the last one to fall in this series. VP slowing it down. And Mezzi has to wait, expecting the flank. Ask himself what his team might do in this situation. Has somebody checked the six? Oh God, it's an execution. He really is putting him out of his misery. That's a merciful kill from Virtus Pro. Two rounds away from a big 2 0. All eyes were on Cloud9, but Virtus Pro have taken the camera and they're pointing at themselves. Boxic just getting caught. That's a tag. Finally getting that kill, but it took him too long. Sanji took the time to push the smoke. 
Now, I think we're going to have another hero round for Cloud9. I mean, they've won some ridiculous rounds here. They've won rounds with just USP. So this isn't out of the question. They've got a scout for S attack. They've got aggression from Alex. He almost lands the headshot. Okay, finally gets the kill he was looking for. And Virtus Pro were trying to set up around Monster. They're still pushing out here towards the B site, but they've got to be very careful they don't lose more members. Oh boy, look at the harassment, the lack of map control. Sanji just chilling towards T-spawn, looking for any flanks versus pro holding position. They're all in here, Cloud9. That's a nice shot from Floppy, but they need a lot more. They've got a man advantage now. Can they support him with angles? Just dueling. A map on the B bomb site. Floppy continues with the Deagle. And there will be rifles to collect should they be successful. The bomb is on the B-bomb side as well. Sanji looking for a flank this entire time. A flank which will never come. Makes his way over. Now, I would imagine he wants to frag as many as possible. The more he kills, the less rifles Cloud9 have. The more money they have to spend. 30 seconds to do what he can. Trying to invite a swing. Oh, well, we know what Sanji's main job is. Cancel everything else, get shot in the arse. Oh, disposal service. Jane won't be Does happy he, with that. He doesn't but have it, a pistol even. Yeah, he's just trying to take money away. Oh. Oh my god! Oh, no, 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 bro. What? Please, How? please. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, he literally didn't have a weapon. He threw it away earlier. He didn't want to give them anything at all. He wanted to make them spend as much money as possible. I have to say, it's very efficient. Very efficient. Perhaps he took the instructions a bit too literally there. <laughs> oh my god. Oh man. I've never seen Sanji do something like that before. In my life. I didn't know he was capable. VP are cracking up as well. Still a 14-9 lead for them. Good to see Floppy getting involved. I think the Flopster's been a little bit quiet so far this series. Surely Cloud9 have to make some Floppy flip-flops, right? That's got to be a thing. I'm sure they've got people on it right now. As soon as I've given them that idea, they're on it. Quick play through mid for Virtus Pro at the start of this one. They've got the control as well. And Woxic is still alone on the A site with this scout. I think this is okay when you've got an AWP up in an aggressive position, but when you've got the scout jump peeking from the site like this, if VP commit to A right now, the retake would be so hard, but Woxic lands a key shot at the start of the round. Ooh. He's jiggling his head, trying to avoid those headshots. Now, if Cloud9 are to have a run, this scout could be a nice warm-up for him. Some shots have been missed. Yekins are so sharp, though. But here come Cloud9. They're not done with this game just yet. Now, Sanji. Don't think he'll be disposing of all his weapons this time. Again, looking for the flank, but everybody's on the site, as is the bomb. A smoke ahead of the bomb. He has time. This could still be a damaging round for Cloud9. Still looking for the flank. Now, Virtus Pro don't have much money in the hole. 38 seconds. If he wants to make a play here, time is running out. I suppose there could be a Hero AK in the next round as well. But should Cloud9 win this round? They'll only be four away. Yes, it's been a difficult task for them. Very uphill struggle. More climbing than walking. But there is a chance. Virtus Pro have been extremely dangerous. But Cloud9 are about to make it to, to double figures. Three weapons in the hand. And indeed, it will be the Hero AK-47 in the next round. Makes sense. Reset the opportunity to try and do some more damage. I would love to see Sanji get his chance to be the hero as well, James. You know, too often. Sanji is the hero if you're smart. He is. He's the smart person's hero. That's true. He helps a lot of stuff happen, but you, you know what I mean. He's getting the big... Oh, he's not getting the big gun. Kickert's getting the big gun. He's <laughs> bought knew, armor. I knew that AK was going. <laughs> I knew it was going. In fairness, Sanji's got two flashes. So if they can use that flash to allow him to swing and try and, try and take a duel with a little assistance, then uh, more power to them. But you just knew it was not, not going to stay in his hands. Honestly, criminally underrated... The role he has, I love it. He, de he, he delivers. People will never appreciate it enough. Everybody should buy Sanji stickers. I bought a souvenir Mac 10 for this reason.
Yeah, get it on the Mac 10 or the MP9 as well. Sanju's favorite weapons. Kicker is going for that solo play. No flashes to help him. He just wants to fight. He spotted Alex towards the B site, and he's going to sneak in. This could work for him. Alex has been spotted. Smoked down defensively from Cloud9. This is causing a ruckus as well. Look at the minimap. Cloud9 are rotating down towards B, but Kickat's still committing to the site. No fights given to him. Now he jumps up, and Floppy gets the first. Alex with one of his own. It looks like the rotation from Cloud9 is warranted. They're getting towards the bomb site, but VP are still in contention here. The bomb will fall back for now. Sanji, he's done his job. While Kiko was looking to make those plays later on, Sanji had the two flashes, go for the pillar flash. Didn't quite get anywhere, but the idea is what I wanted to see, so that's good. And Yekindai will try to do damage once again. Hasn't picked up that rifle, however. One versus three. Floppy needs to stay alive here. They can't have every round being expensive for Cloud9 because if VP win one later on and they keep maiming Cloud9 like this, they may be really lacking when it counts and they're up against match point. 16 seconds and he'll make a run for it to the A bomb site. Woksik lies in situ. Looking for the plant now as he moves forward on the radar. Swatting Yekendar. And Cloud9 are three rounds behind. Starting to heat up now. Only three rounds in a row, but because of all these uh, low buys, Cloud9 seems to be winning throughout this game. It means it is actually getting close for them. So many CTs rotate down to the B site. Woxic finishes the job at A. That is a stressed man right there. But uh, it is baptism by fire, and that's absolutely the best way to do things. No soft targets. Let's get straight in there as Versus Pro look to on the B bomb site. We've got chain flashbangs into the B bomb site, but we've also got frags from Cloud9. I think everybody wants to see this, or most people. Floppy with that long reload. Mezzi will cover in the meantime. Some nice teamwork there. They'll all survive. They'll build that little padding in the coffers so they can buy again if they are to lose a round. That is exactly the kind of round Cloud9 needed. Got to give a shout out to Mezzi as well. He's just taken the top spot on the scoreboard, even ahead of Jame. He's been putting up some decent numbers in terms of kills. It's not always led to round wins for Cloud9, I will say that. And he was often man, uh, the last man in on the T side, kind of cleaning up the mess. But at the same time, for a rookie playing his first big tournament, he's doing a good job in this game. And now Virtus Pro are going to up the pace towards this B site. A couple of early flashes being deployed. This is a gun round for them, but they're faking the early B play. Now they're going to move into B short. A lot of nades baited out from Cloud9 as well. They used a lot of counter smokes there, and VP still have a fair amount of utility if they want to pop this site. In they go. A second attempt. Messi through the smoke, though. Landed important headshot. Buster needs a multi frag. He's got key curve to help, however. Swinging around the site now. They are decimating Cloud9 on this B bomb site. Mezzi needs help and he needs it fast. He's alone. He's in the water. Woxic will try and distract. In the meantime, that's beautiful from Mezzi, but he still needs more. Two on three. Still in the water. Looking for the burst. Low on the bullet. Woxic with a flick. One versus two. Is he going to the high ground or is he leaving? Cloud9 still have money in the hole thanks to that previous round. Does he commit the AWP? He's being given nothing. Virtus Pro playing for the beeps. If he jumps over, I don't think he's saving his AWP. He has a kit, trying to bait them out, looking all over the place, and there's Buster to put him out of his misery. Match point for Virtus Pro. So unexpected for Buster to just run into the open from Monster in that post plant. He could have just played the time, and you see Woxic is fully not ready for that. He's no way in hell going to expect that angle. Initial spray from Mezzi, a couple of good headshots from him, but none of his teammates were able to get kills on the B site. Even though Woxit got that initial trade and put it into a somewhat winnable position, it's not meant to be. It's Virtus Pro with map and series point. Three of them, in fact. They've got a 15-12 lead and three chances to close this out. Lovely from Woxit, the aggression they need. Cloud9 need three from three now. They've had a good run on the scoreboard, but Versus Pro has broken the scoreboard now. It's broken their run, rather. The scoreboard still works. And again, that eco anti-eco run was so important for Cloud9 to have this buy here. Alex gets dropped. Floppy still trying to defend the B bomb site. It's been a problem. We've seen a lot of CTs in both halves on this B bomb site. Fade away flash towards Monster as Versus Pro make their way away from B. 
just as Woksik jumps in and commits deep on the B bomb site. As Tag will just sit on long in the meantime with an off angle. We don't have any sound cues just yet. As things are quiet, it's Mezzi who makes his way towards A. VP trying to identify what play they should make. Kiko going super wide in case there was a flank earlier on. And Mezzi's been spotted on the site. And I'm not sure if s -Tag can help him, but maybe post-plant he can. Slowly backing towards the site. He'll be checked for, or will he? Sanji goes wide and goes down. 30 seconds on the clock, the multi frag from s -Tag! Running out of bullets, down to the pistol. Mezzi comes in to make the save, which leaves Kiko alone. One versus four. Very expensive round for Virtus Pro. There's not much money in the bank. S-Tag eliminated. Cloud9 are heading towards 13. That's the kind of situation where maybe if VP knew 100% that Esetag's always been playing that A site, maybe they actually realize that he's still there. But they are just completely clueless. They didn't realize Esetag was still on long. They didn't realize perhaps that Esetag has been playing that A site in almost all of these rounds. And even though it didn't look pretty from Esetag, the spray was successful. That's the main thing. It was effective on this first kill and then winning the second fight alongside Mezzi getting into the action. Well timed peak from him to get the kill in the back. Good teamwork between those two players. And this is really heating up now. Virtus Pro only with one AK for this round. And if they lose this one, then we're going the distance. Kicker spent all his money on that AK as well for what it's worth. Well, I think he did he say that? Oh, so tagging the door's been broken off. Nasty Ooh. advantage of the HE grenade there. Really limits the cover. You need someone to cover the pinch, but gives them more angles, the CTs. And Alex comes to show some presence as well. Refusing to be bullied by Virtus Pro. They will return the favor in kind. This is a great way to move into potential overtime. One more round in regulation after this. Looking very likely with that Glock of Sanji. <laughs> and boy, did they come for him. Well, then the test continues for Cloud9. They've got to go high up. There are more hurdles to jump over before they can make it to the third map of Dust2, including a potential overtime. But I think they're all warm now, especially Mezzi, 28 for 18. Hashtag Beef Wellington, hashtag Chessington, World of Adventures. So Kicker was the man who saved the AK previously and didn't have money, but Sanji drops that AK over to him, takes a Tech-9 for himself. They get four rifles out for Virtus Pro in a round they will be wanting to win to close out this series. Cloud9 have fought hard to come back, but they still need one more round to take us to overtime. And they're getting aggressive on B early. S attack here to help from Connector. Virtus Pro losing some map control early. Alex is able to get this early information. Now the question is, do VP have this awareness? They heard that smoking connector, and they're actually going to commit towards the B site. Oh, my days. That Ooh. was scary to watch, but they'll poke and prod, but not commit just yet. Buster still has the wide ground at the playground. Here's that awkward angle from Alex, but he's missed a shot, went too wide of the crosshair. And now short B has been taken. S-Tag has an angle, though. He'll fall away from it for the time being, because he has no cover upstairs. He's got to be real careful. Buster still trying to find out what is happening. What is the climate for Cloud9? Mezzi creeping. Risks are being taken. s with a two-man spray down. Mezzi sees the barrel of the gun. And here we go. Surely it's overtime. Two versus four. s is alive with five HP. Kika and Buster doing what they can. They don't have the bomb right now. 35 seconds. Is there enough time to do this? Buster's been lurking the entire time. s still in connector. There could be a run here from Virtus Pro, but this is going to be a very important fight. s tag looking the wrong way, but backing off. Spotted by Buster. Just about. 2-1-2. Two, two. 20 seconds left. Bomb just about to be recovered, but they have to go B. I don't think they can go back A. And both CTs were here, but they're actually rotating away. Oh, no. Messi the taking the first fight. Kill is found. Nine seconds. They're going to get that bomb down just in time. And Woksik has to clutch with the AWP. He's sitting back at heaven right now. Goes into the underpass position. Oh, Deagle in hand. He spots the first player spamming the site, trying to see if he can desperately get an early frag. He knows that one of them's low. That's why he's deciding to go with the Deagle here, but he's continuing to clear the angles, and it's not going to happen. Buster closes it out, and Virtus Pro take it 2-0.
I can't believe that clutch from Virtus Pro. Definitely the better team on the day, just too strong. And today, overtime was not meant to be for Cloud9. So, so close, but to lose it like that has got to be frustrating. That's their first game of this new roster. Their absolutely first professional game. First map was a, a wipeout for Virtus Pro. Second one didn't go their way, but there's plenty more CS to come from Cloud9 and from Virtus Pro. Thoughts to the desk after the break.